Hello. Hi, everybody. Welcome, welcome to another episode of If This Canvas Could Talk. We are on episode 21, and I'm going to go ahead and invite. Hi, Terry. I'm getting Terry on first, and then and as soon as she comes on. Um, but anyway, it's, oh, here she comes. Okay, everybody. Hello, okay. hello. Hi, my Why friend. don't we do that? Hi. Hi. <laughs> hey. Welcome, everybody. Okay, uh, we are on episode 21, Miss Terry. I can't believe it. It goes fast. I know. So I'm just going to jump in because I have so much to talk about with Erwin, our special guest. Come on, time. I'm so excited too. I'm getting situated. I'm fixing, I changed my angle a little bit to get some better lighting. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just fussing. So while I fuss, bring him on. Okay, sounds hey. good. Hey. Hi, Erwin. Hi, Erwin. I am so excited. So I'll do a little in introduction. So welcome. We're on 20, uh, episode 21 of If This Canvas Could Talk. And we have with us a fellow artist, oh, oh Terry Wilson Art and Jeanette Bergstrom Art um, are our hosts. And we have Erwin Ong, which I had met through another mentor, artist mentor that we had belonged to. And I am so excited to have Erwin. He is going to help us learn about licensing, wholesale selling. He, uh, I'll tell you a little bit about him and then Erwin jump in if I missed something wrong. <laughs> you are a illustrator, surface designer, and a muralist. You live in White Plains, New York, and you started Duckamuck is his company. And he started that in 2020. So right Oh at, wow. Was that at the potential? pandemic yes okay but you must have been doing it forever right i mean yeah oh well first of all you can hear yeah. me okay yeah yeah You're okay um hello everyone um hi terry hi hi yeah and uh, congratulations on episode 21 i remember when you were just talking about starting this yeah. and now look at you look at you I both know. Episode 21, it's that's, that's amazing. It's gone by really uh, fast, but we were, have, we're yeah. having fun talking to artists Good. and learning and sharing yeah. our stories. Great, great. Yeah, so to answer your question, yeah, I did, um, you know, I've been drawing all my life. I'm self-taught. Um, but what happened in 2020, as you know, um, you know, I uh, just, world shut down. I found myself with... Um, a little bit of extra time and sort of just needed to put it into something. And um, I had um, found a course online. Um, it was um, Bonnie Christine's yeah. um, uh, immersion course. So, you know, she teaches service um, pattern design. But what was what drew, drew me to the course was learning Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator, because okay. I yeah. didn't know that before. And I had always been sort of intimidated by the software and, you know, vectors and moving the, the, the dots to make the, you know, the, the lines curve the way you want. And when I learned that, um, that was really sort of the catalyst. It made me feel confident because I knew that that's sort of the way the business side worked, right? Like if you have right. artwork, um, you know, you can do it on Photoshop, but like, vec you know, vector art really opens the doors. Right. And so that's what um, I used to then um, you know, move myself forward, and I, that's, you know, I, I'm here now. Because you, you also illustrate by hand, obviously, with pen and ink and watercolor, and so do. do you find that you have figured out a way to scan in your art so that you can make your surface patterns from your line drawings as well, or do you just redo them in Illustrator? That was um, my question. Right. <laughs> so, so I started... Before I knew Illustrator, um, I would just scan in my work, color it in Photoshop, and then print, you know, print them. So I'll, I'll show some samples here. So this yeah. is like a fish with a birthday yeah. hat. It's actually oh one of the, God, this is it. like the first card I made. I made this a, a, as a design for my sister's birthday. Oh, and um, 
So you can see it's hand drawn, you know, sort of just like some curvy lines. This is another hand drawn one. It's a barbell that says thanks a ton. <laughs> um, yeah. I love it. And then um, after that, I scanned that initial set of designs that it done by hand. I then switched over. I added um, drawing on an iPad. I used Fresco okay. and that's okay. how I was drawing. And so then I switched over where a lot of my work then became um, digital. Okay. So like here, the dinosaur, yeah. so this mm -hmm. is all digital. Mm -hmm. um, I have this, these two whales, that's digital. So um, cute. when you say digital, do you mean sorry. that? Because this is a whole new world that I don't really uh -huh. know much about uh -huh. at all. So uh -huh. when you say digital, you mean that you are drawing that on the iPad okay. or whatever you're using right. the iPad. So exactly. you're drawing it, yeah. and it's just like going onto the computer versus a piece of paper. Exactly, exactly. And I think there's like settings you can do to or to have your brush mimic the way you know. Uh, an, an ink would be absorbed by paper. I haven't gone that um, the, gone that route. I mean, that's a whole world, right? Like you can create yeah. brushes, you can buy the brushes. Um, but I'll tell you now is, um, and we can go into this more as we talk about wholesale, is I've actually now tried to explore reincorporating hand-drawn elements ah. into my work. Because I feel like okay. um, that's another layer layer of like people being able to connect with the work right they, they're like oh a human mm -hmm. made this yes well, with ai yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you know what i mean like yeah. it's Irwin's hand like you can see the pen on paper you can see the ink and so now my next for the next few sort of uh, so next collection really that i'm designing i want to go back to hand drawn okay. and even just like well, you know the studies that i made of these like because these started yeah. out on paper that i traced over on an ipad I'm I'm gonna like bring that back and see like what if the hand drawn dinosaur does better than you know Ooh. the iPad drawn oh, dinosaur. Oh yeah, right? you know. Mm -hmm. So there's just like some testing there too. Yeah, you're gonna have to let us know what happens. But sure. um, and and Terry, if you wanna, I wanna know, like, what was your first like? Where did you get your first sales coming from? Was it from your licensing? Was it from selling your art as prints and cards? Like kind of walk us through how you kind of got started and then where you are now. Cause I know you just went to a, a show, a wholesale show where buyers would come by and you know, yeah. for their stores. And so I want to hear about that part too. Sure, sure. So I'll, um, I started at the beginning with, um, and it's really the, the best I've done is selling in person at pop ups. Okay. So, okay. So the first ones I did, um, I think the first one I went, I did by myself. Um, I, I used to live in Orange County, which is also my yeah. connection to, to Jeanette. Um, but I drove up to San Francisco because my brother at the at the time he was organizing a lot of um, pop up sort of events for artists um, in the Bay Area. Okay. So I set up a little table, you know, put up all my stuff. Didn't sell a thing. Um, <laughs> you know happens but uh but yeah, that's really been that's the most hard. popular so far over time you know uh, just tightening up branding getting a banner figuring out sort of racks and displays but um you know to answer your question my the most of my sales really for now has been in person okay. um you know okay. i Perfect. think the um the people really connect with my work but when they see the story when i'm there it yeah. really sort of just helps seal seal the deal um yeah. And, you know, I do also have a, an Etsy um, that I don't do too much with, but um, I, based off of this, this card, yeah. when I had it um, on Etsy, yeah. I found that yeah. there were a lot of people into fitness who oh. were buying this card. So oh. that's not necessarily oh, the market I'm in. But when I saw that happen, I created four or five more fitness themed designs. Oh, and, okay. And, um, and so that... Um, you know, it doesn't make a lot. It's like, you know, 30, 20, 30 bucks a month, uh, but it's not nothing, right? That's right. like a half a cell phone bill. Mm -hmm. um, right. And then I, I also designed some uh, fitness themed cards for the holidays. So that, so that sort of just like feeds itself now. Um, but then I also have a Shopify. So most okay. of my, my other work is on Shopify. You know, I, I host my own shop, but yeah. the bulk of my sales are still in person. Okay, because Terry just yeah. said, Terry, tell, you just tell a little bit about what you just did. Well, I, 
I just did my first in-person show as well. Um, I had a booth at a, a fair here. I know it's really fun and exciting. And same, same, but same thing. Like we're going to do the next one and we're tightening up stuff and figuring out and tweaking. Um, and it was interesting because the director of the event came by because she, you know, it was my first one. And she just said, you know, come several times and commit to, going and she's like you will build a following and you know not everybody's going to purchase the very first time that they see you but you, they're aware of you now and then they may come back to the next one and be like okay well now I'm ready to purchase so it's just like uh building you know you're just building I think as artists we're just kind of building everything is step by step by step and there's really no way to kind of there's if you try to shortcut through all of those things that it really doesn't turn out that well in the long run, right? Yeah. So I like yeah. that you said well, that you're selling in person first. Yes. yes, yes. And your price points are much higher too, I imagine, Terry, compared to me. I'm, yes. I'm selling, then, you know, $4 stickers, $6 cards, you know, $20 prints. So, of course, if it's the commitment, right, to be able to shell out however much they're going to uh, pay for, for your your work, that's a different decision making it, it process, is. right? Where it must it might take a couple of times or they have to be more familiar yes, with yes, you. They yes, have to know your story. Absolutely. Things like that. I yeah. get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for you though, I was thinking as you were saying that you were selling in person, because Jeanette and I are just diving in right now to creating prints for our work, right? Mm -hmm. And you have inventory then, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to purchase all of your inventory to take to the show to then sell. Yes? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's a whole Which, other ball of wax. Oh, oh yeah, because paper is so dense. I'm like, every time I see, like, my, my booth neighbors, you know, some of them have jewel, you know, things that are like, like jewelry or, you know, or things <laughs> that just sell. And I'm like, oh, God, this paper is sometimes it's just so, it's so hard to, to transport. But it's... It is what it is, you know, to but, be able to sell in person. But, you did, but, you do your own, I think I talked to you about this before. Terry and I are outsourcing a really high quality printer called Finer Works mm -hmm. out of Texas. They do an amazing mm -hmm. job on their fine art prints and she like, like high quality prints. Mm -hmm. You are doing it on your own, creating. Yeah. Your By the way, I, I watched that, um, I watched that live. That was super informative. So, oh, good. Uh, oh. yeah, that, that was that was oh, great. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I don't uh, right now. My my, I don't do sort of drop shipping or I. So I I'm sorry, I don't outsource my printing either. You know, okay. drop ship or not. Um, so yeah, I have a, a a an Epson photo printer here that I use um, for my printing. But yeah. he's um, oh sorry, nice. He's, He's doing the score lines. He's folding them. He's buying the envelopes. He's packaging. Um, well, for no. yeah, for you got paper, manufacturing. It's self-made manufacturing yeah. thing going on. So yeah. so prints prints I do. I just buy the paper. I buy for a while. I was selling them with a the mat, but I'm going to phase that out because people don't really buy with the mat. They'll just buy no. the print. We talked um, about that. Yeah. Yeah. Because when you buy a uh, frame, most frames come with mats. Exactly. Exactly. So and um. Yeah, I do have that option available in case there uh -huh. are people who just want it for whatever reason. Um, but I'm going to um, start just carrying, having less of the mats around yeah. in, in my yeah. inventory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. but for paper mm -hmm. right now, I, I actually go buy it uh, from a paper mill. I buy the cards. I do A2 okay. size. So that's four and a half by five and a half. Um, I buy the cards pre-cut and pre-scored. Oh, and then okay. I just print, and I just print on one side, and then I fold it. But would you, um, go ahead. Who would you share that source with us? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, it's like the the paper mill store. I can I can send you notes. Yeah, you know, uh, an email for later. But yeah, but it's just yeah. like a paper company I found. Um, okay. But what I'm pro for my best sellers best selling cards. What I'll probably do, and we can talk about this, you know, w as we move into wholesale. Is I want to probably just have them printed okay. in bulk, so yep. you know, cut, scored, folded, um, and that way it just saves me time. And since yeah. I know those are um, designs that are selling through and selling consistently, yeah, um, it'll save me time, and then it'll lower my my costs too, right? So it'll right. just be higher right. Oh, because you're me. buying in bulk. <laughs> yeah. And what 
how do you what <clears throat> how are your stickers doing because Erin does stickers he even has some t-shirts with his characters on it and um he does some i saw you were posting about a mural um but how do your stickers do uh stickers are okay in person okay. so far okay. i haven't been able to um crack the code as far as getting um uh wholesale to work oh. for them um nice. but i yeah but i think um i i, I mean who knows why right but the, the things that yeah. i want to do to sort of just as part of trial and error is I need better photography. Um, uh, it's basically mm -hmm. that and better merchandising on my end. Because when people see them in person, they, they love them and they'll buy them. But uh, I'm not a very good photographer. I'm not a very good stylist. So um, that's one of like my next big just things I want to figure out is how do mm -hmm. I outsource that? You know, mm -hmm. Either send my do stuff somewhere and have them photograph it or someone comes here and we do a shoot, something like that. Yeah. I, yes, yes. I have a neighbor who is a professional photographer. She does stuff for real estate agents, but she also does like high school portraits. And she mm -hmm. comes over when I have print, when I have uh, paintings done and uh, she does a fantastic job because I, I only have my iPhone. So right. I do. Which think is if you sometimes wanna... people do it just with an iPhone, you know, yeah. just, just for the record. Yeah. I think that's powerful enough. Um, but yes, I, it's empty. <laughs> Yeah. You guys, I'm telling you, like, that is the key. So we've been, I've been learning that as well because we're doing prints. And so you have to have a crisp photo. And then Jeanette was helping me go through the lighting in the editing. But even, like, I just did a photo shoot this past weekend, my very first one. Yeah. Um, and she came and did stuff for branding and marketing. And, you know, you can put all kinds of filters and different things on, and it's all about, like, most of what she is going to do is going to come on the back end after the photos are taken. So if we could learn that, and I'm sure we can learn it because we're artistic, right? So we have that eye already for those things, but it's just a matter of time, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. of spending the time to find the information to learn it to try it to do all those things so and then you're like well i could do that or i could just make something else and then you just go to making something right um, <laughs> erwin do you have any like um because one idea i had was like art students like at a school who are who, oh. who want to be photographers it might be a perfect way to like get you some better photos and also help them like using yeah. their portfolios? Sure. Yeah, no, that's a great idea. I hadn't thought about that. Um, uh, I thought about like uh, uh, trying to reach out to schools for other others, you know, sort of projects, but I hadn't thought about it for photography. So I'll certainly keep that in okay. mind. That's great. Okay. okay yeah, so now, you. because I would think that stickers would do really well because I, I see other people on Instagram that are like selling out of. I mean, I'm blown yeah. away by how many stickers they're selling. It's it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, your yeah, stuff no. is so good that yeah. it's just a matter of getting it yeah. out there. I love everything you do. I, I, I just think I'm oh. in love with your characters. Me oh, too. Yeah. Yeah. I just Thank love it. You. Okay, so then tell me, have you ever had a fabric license yet? No. So my licensing, I have one. Um, it's with a notebook company called Denique. Okay. So if you're okay. familiar with them, it's okay. D-E-N-I-K. They're a company based out of Utah. Um, okay. You, you um, the, their notebooks are, are great. They're, you know, the paper quality is good. The binding is great. And how I um, came across them is um, they uh, have a service where you can put anything you can print anything on their notebook covers. So like oh, Jeanette's, cool. your, okay. you know, your artwork, you can do that. Um, Terry, of course, you can do that too. And so they had a special, you know, they had a coupon, you know, like get a notebook free, you know, you just pay for shipping. So I did that a couple of years ago. And then when I got it printed, when I got it, I just posted about it online. I tagged them. Uh -huh. And then from that, they reached out to me and said, right, would you be interested in doing a nice little insane. series for us? Yeah. Uh -huh. So they do that. It's called That's their artist series. So they okay. do that now. I mean, if you go on their website, it's D E N I K. So D is David, E N is Nancy, I K. Okay. Uh, I think their Instagram is Shop Danique. Okay. Um, and they, 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 you know, they feature artists all the time. But so yeah, these are my these are my notebooks. So I this is one saw you open with, one 
Yeah, I saw them yeah. opening on a post you did. My favorite is the Under the Sea. Yeah, that was my favorite. Yeah, I yeah. So this is actually, this is the one I did as a sample. I mean, okay. when I did the one-off. Okay. So, and then we, um, so I had to, you know, I worked with them and make sure it worked with the dimensions. And here's another one that oh. was based off of a drawing uh, uh, on, a, uh, on a notebook cover with a Sharpie. I love it. I love yeah, it. Yeah, so that is, that's the, that's the one um, sort of uh, licensing uh, contract that I have. So have you done any um, research to reach out? Have you done any, like, submissions to other licensing companies yet? Or have you I thought have, about? Okay. I have in sort of bits, bits and bobs. Um, there's a um, company called Casetify. So uh -huh. they do cell phone covers. Oh, cell phone cases, right? Yeah, yeah. So they're ones that I really wanted to do something with. Uh -huh. um, I must, oh, I think um, a uh, fabric gift wrap. Yeah. So it's called, you know, like, oh. uh, a, yeah. So I, I really want to do gift wrap, but I don't like how wasteful it is. So I'm trying to find a way to do it, but on like fabric, you know, they have that Japanese style of, sort of tradition of, of wrapping yes. gifts with fabric that you can sort of reuse and uh, so yeah. um i'm trying to um work on that but my b even before that my um so the more immediate goal is to get the portfolio yeah so prepared, that's what you've got to work way. on that right exactly okay. exactly so, so um, how do you create a portfolio or how do you do a portfolio when it's it's almost like having a bio when you don't have anything to put on the bio yet, you know, like, so you see other artists, they have like, I've shown at this show and I've done this and I've been published here. And then you're like, yeah. I've done nothing yet. I'm just starting. <laughs> well, I will say, I mean, we can get into that and maybe that's another call we can do Terry, but okay. you, I think there's, yeah, I'm going to write it down. You probably have more. Well, if you don't have, we all have to start somewhere, I guess, you know, that, right. that's, that's one way, but also, I think if you sat down, at least for me, when I sat down and had to do my first sort of bio and artist resume, I was surprised with how much I could put down that qualified for that, even though I didn't think I had anything, right? So maybe like, like if you and Jeanette just, or you, you know, your other sort of just even friends or, you know, people, your family, they're like, you know, what have I done? You know, have I had a group show that I forgot about? You know, yeah. did I do something? Did I design something for someone that I forgot about? It's just something to yeah. to keep in mind. And then, but specifically and, for and, oh, oh, go ahead. Go, no, uh, just to answer Terry's question about a portfolio, um, I mean, of course, the bio is important too. But um, what I'm talking about specifically is the actual samples of the design. Right. 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 So, I mean, that's separate from the bio, right? This is like, sure. what are the things that I can pitch to them to say these would look good on your product? Right. Right. So. Whether so you that's have, no, you go, have to customize ahead, it, you have to customize it to who you're aiming for as far as the whole wholesaler yeah, goes. Yeah, yeah okay, exactly, gotcha. exactly. So, like, you know, I if I can do it, you can do it one of two ways. You can say that, like, okay, I'm trying to go into this company, so I want to make sure that the things I give them match what they do, but also. Mm -hmm. You know, like you want to stay sort of, well, I, I would think you want to stay true to what you're doing. So you have to just make sure that even before that, that your art will actually match with what they're doing. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like if, if you're pitching to a, you know, like I would, would never pitch to a company that would, I don't know, that, that would sell sort of like goth stuff or like right. steampunk. Right. Or right. like, right. So because my stuff is very like, eh, eh, right. So um, right. just so things, th things like that. So um and maybe the uh, I have to do some more research about the, to make sure that the companies that I'm approaching are the right ones. And right. then when I do, to make sure that I'm curating as much as I can the right, right. combination of elements, patterns, icons. Right? It doesn't always have to be repeat patterns. It could be like just the just the fish. Just but maybe you'll do a yeah, just a single. But maybe you'll you'll um you'll add a, a little pattern to go with it. So in case mm -hmm. they want to add something to the background, or, you know, just to give them a a, a, a little taste of what sure. their, um, how your work can translate to what it is that they're doing. 
Right. Yeah. So I yeah. did watch Bo Bonnie Christine's um, free, um, you know, like the free challenge. And she mm -hmm. did give you like the basics on how to do a, a, a repeat pattern mm -hmm. um, that I found yep. fascinating. And I've always wanted to know how to do that. So I loved her. Even her challenge was awesome. So I was curious when you're, sh when you're putting your curating the art that you do have that you think would fit on that manufacturer's product or whatever you like about that manufacturer do you also show different colorways like different mm -hmm. like with your under the sea do you do it with a blue background and then a green background and then a is that how you yeah. kind of do the series or do you try to do um different prints within that series if that makes sense i yeah it, it does um Good question. Uh, I would, and I think a lot of people do this, I would probably do like a couple of colorways. Uh -huh. So the same design, same patterns and be colored in a couple of colorways. I'm not very good with color. So that's also the reason why <laughs> I'm dragging my feet on this. You um, you say that, but your colors are so happy. Oh, thank you. I, but I think I, I haven't been able to, um, it, 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 I haven't been able to sort of like harness it. If, if that makes sense. Okay. So like if someone said change the colors on this, it's just, you know, yeah, it's, but thank you. I, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, so I would do the same design in a couple of colorways. Okay. Perfect. So what, like for this, yeah. in, in the example of this, I wish I had a, a, I brought one of those pattern sheets, but what I'll probably do for this, I'll tell you, uh -huh. I'll submit this design on its own, yeah. right? Yeah. Then I'll, I'll probably pull a couple of these. I'll do just like a grid of maybe four that's um, just the clam, just, okay. just the the fish, Perfect. just mm -hmm. the squid, just so okay. they can see. Like maybe mm -hmm. they just want to take the out, you know, the, the 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 animal itself. And then I'll probably try to do some patterns that are just super like light, like one with just like the lightning, one uh -huh. with just the the drops, one with yeah, just and make dots, that, and make that yeah. into a pattern. Yeah, so oh, fun. just like polka dots, just very light, you know, just they just look like notebook doodles. I mean, that's sort of like what I, that's how this started was it was really just like me doodling on a notebook. So I kind of want to evoke that same energy, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so that with, if I stay with this color pattern and then, or this color palette, and then um, stay with those sort of very, um, sort of almost like notebook doodle motifs, then... Yeah. Based on that, those are probably the company. I know I'll, I'll go to, um, you know, I can go to like a Target or a, a TJ right. Maxx or Home Goods and just see where are those, what are the products that have those same designs or similar. Yeah. And you look yeah. on the back of the label and it'll say who's making it. Right. And then you, you can try right. to email them or find their name on LinkedIn oh. or someone and just say, this is the. You, you look for the art director and then so that, or you go on their website and they already say, if you want to work with us, here's how you submit your information and then okay. you're ready to go. Oh, right. that's a great clue. Uh -huh. That's a great clue for anybody uh -huh. wanting to do pattern design like that. That's awesome. Or, or even, so I was thinking about it this morning, actually, Jeanette, like for you, if you did the, the lemons, yes, put the yeah. lemons on yeah. in a sheet, the lemons could be licensed. It could be, on tea towels, it could be gift wrap, it can be a notebook cover, but don't, right? Like don't a, I, I mm -hmm. do, but I would have to get them into a digital format and then I would have to do it as a repeat, right? No, 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 Because sometimes would... you will just buy, I mean, if you if you go into the store, you maybe, you know, try to notice this now, is sometimes the, the things that are printed on a surface yeah. aren't repeats. Ah, okay. Right? Okay. Like, like uh, yeah. you know, uh, a beach towel does not necessarily repeat. A, an apron is not necessarily a repeat. It, it could just be a crop part of your artwork uh, that fits the surface uh, that it's on, right? So, yeah, right. That, that like, right. Work. Terry's daisies that she did that she had done um, at, towards the beginning. Oh my gosh, I think those would make such cute prints, like for a, a kid's onesie or even a t shirt. Uh Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Or even that that um canvas behind you, Terry, right? Like I see that as a Yeah, it could a, be a piece a piece of it could be Yeah. A, a, like you said, whatever. Whatever yeah, the a planner. The, the, uh, uh, the cover of a planner. Yeah. I see that as a cover of a, a planner. It'd be yeah. the um 
the the surface of a, a gift bag put that on both yeah. sides right like so there's all yeah. these different things now so that the next time you go to a uh wherever right and the, you see the the wall of, of gift bags just look on the back and see who makes yeah. them and okay. see you know a, a lot of times those places will have their in-house designers but sometimes they're looking for art and this is the right. way for you to be able to, to you know Ooh, that's a good clue that's so good that's so good i never thought about flipping it over and seeing who was actually making it like, like just something so simple but you just don't you just don't think of it so thanks for sharing that that's right, huge sure. that's a good yeah. one and that's something that all of us everyone that's listening or everyone that's going to watch later it's something that everyone can go and do yeah. yeah and this is something if you want to go into licensing right so that again right. this is um if you want to diversify your income it's a very long game meaning okay. you know if okay. you, even if you get your your first you have to get someone you know to have a conversation with you to to sign you up but between usually between the time you sign a contract and you submit the artwork and they still have to manufacture everything and sell everything and process the payments you're usually looking at a year and a half two years maybe Down until you get your oh, first payment okay, okay that's depending good to know on too. what it is depending on okay. what it is right yeah that's really good just think about like anything you're manufacturing you're like you could be selling right. in July for holiday, but then that for this year, you might be already planning holiday 2024. Yes. Meaning it's not even they... going to hit the shelves until next right. December. So you're not going to see the money right. until July 2025. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not just sell yeah. Yet. So, yeah. <laughs> and with most, most apparel companies, you're six months, six months out from like you're always a season or two seasons ahead when they're planning what they're going to have. Mm -hmm. But I, I, another question, a little more financial question you can answer or not answer, but do they pay you by the piece sold? Um, Depends on the agreement. Or, oh, okay. So there's right. a variety. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It just like was, so they can, um, you can uh, uh, usually if it's a, you know, you can, they can buy the artwork outright or buy the rights to it outright. Um, Would you do that? Get, you know, you're usually told not to, but yeah. you know, that depends on your relationship to your artwork. If you need the money as soon as, you know, sooner rather than later, that's your decision to make. But I think ideally you want to hang on to the art that you, yeah. like, that, with that you right. like and, and be able to use it as many times as you like. Yeah. But it, it depends. It depends. Right. I, um, I but, also heard you could do uh, like a limited time. Yeah. Like you could say, okay, yeah. you guys have full reign of this for like three months or six months or whatever. Okay. It could be limited time, limited geographic area, oh, limited okay. to the kind of products, right? Like you say that I'm going to partner with this ice with this tumbler company, yet you know, uh -huh. and they only can use that artwork to print on tumblers. Oh, okay. meaning okay. I could take you know. I like with you could say I, they can only do this on notebooks. So if I went to this company and said, "Would you want to print this, but on this, I still get to do that," and you know they're not competing anyway, right? right? They're not the same company, right. so it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, but yeah, it is usually you know you get a percentage per sale. Okay. That's usually what the agreement is for a licensing. You know, you get X number, you know, two percent of each okay. sale or whatever it is. Okay. Or you know, yeah. if it's fabric, think... it's like by the yard. I think you get, you know, a, a couple of cents Percentage. by the yard or something like but that. You got to have the volume. It's got to be a big yeah. volume to really. Right. Make a dent. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I have two, two, two questions, but I feel like I'm monopolizing all the questions. <laughs> okay. I figured you were going to do that anyway. You're fine. I'm listening. I'll look, I've got pages and notes. I'm good. Go <laughs> ask them, girl. Okay. So. It feels like you're in the spot, Erwin, that have you thought about, and I know when we were in our class together with, I want to give her a shout out, Marisa Ann Cummings, because she also does character and licensing. She also does fine art. Um, and we were in that, her course together and her membership together. And she, she does a great job of advising people on licensing. I think she had a card license with, um, and some prints that she had licensed with urban outfitters i think it was so um she's a good source if somebody's really interested in just the art business side of things but 
to hear you talk and all the things that you've done, have you thought about getting a licensing agent to represent you? Um, I have not thought about that. I would, I'm sorry, I have thought about it, but I, um, I'm not ready to, to have that conversation yet because I'm working on my portfolio. Okay. Okay. So I feel like once I have that ready, then, um, the same way that I would approach a licensing, a potential licensing partner, just to manage, you know, to get my designs on a product, yeah. it's the same time I would want to reach out to potentially to agents and see if, if they're, you know, interested in representing. So, yeah. um, yeah, it's certainly Perfect. something I would think of, you know, it's not for everyone. Yeah. Um, you know, they'll take a cut of the money. They, they, um, sometimes they um, require you to make work all the time. You know, they have to say you have to oh, produce yeah. a certain number of things per month, right? Yeah. Because they need to be able to sell. But if that doesn't work right. with your workflow in your life, then, you know, so, and then sometimes they're exclusive, meaning any deals you make, even if it's outside of something that they found for you, you, you know, you would need to bring it to them. So it really just depends uh -huh. on, you know, it's like any other business business relationship right like sometimes it, yeah. it works sometimes it doesn't um yeah. but yeah I'll, but you know the short answer is i am interested in that but i'm not you know i'm not ready to, to pursue sure. that quite yet yeah okay okay i just thought it was interesting because i was curious so now i guess i can ask you about you did go to a whole show that whole Wholesale. That's what I was going to ask. Yeah. So tell us about <laughs> yes. that. Like, so how did you wholesale? get into it? What What's the point of it? What? How did it all work? Like, give us the whatever you want to share. Yeah. Yeah. So I um signed up for Fair. Are you guys familiar with Fair dot com? F A R E dot com. So it's essentially an online platform for people to be able to sell wholesale. For anyone, a maker, artist, anything that has, you know, uh, something you make yourself and you want to sell it wholesale to a store, you can do it on FAIR. So it's essentially uh -huh. an Etsy, but instead of okay. selling directly to a consumer, you only sell to s stores. Oh, I see. Okay. I never heard of that. I've never Me neither. Heard of that. That's great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and, you know, you can uh, apply to, to um, sell. Right now, I think the wait list, the, it's, it's in a wait list kind of situation. But if you are interested and you have the, the, the products that you are going to be able to wholesale now, like you guys are at Finer Works, if you have like, you know, I would say if you have like five, six items that you're five, six prints that are sort of in yeah. a, a certain collection yeah. that are ready to go, yeah. look into it. And if you want to okay. do it wholesale, you can do that. Okay. Um, okay. But so that's how I started is I, I applied for for fair i got in um but it was um no one was biting you know i, th I mean it's the same terry the same as like selling in person you really just need to figure out like your branding your storytelling making sure your photography works mm -hmm. right your story translates through this website and when you're not there on the other side to see who's reading right. um, so that's always going to be a work in progress but um i what i did it is based after I get gotten that set up is I um, contacted stores that I thought would be interested in selling my stuff. Ah, okay. In person, you just so like them local them. local stores that Some are local, but um, I email I either DM them or email them. Okay. And, okay. Um. Yeah, and you know, so, some wrote back, some didn't. Some wrote back and said we're not interested. Some wrote back and said, great. You know what? And the fact that I was on just, there. It sounds uh, just like if you're applying to a gallery, it's the same thing. Yeah. You've got to like find a gallery that you think would fit with your artwork. You got to reach out to them. You got to start a conversation, get that going on that mm -hmm. personal touch. So that's exactly what you were doing for that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So th that was, um, so that helped a lot to just like give me the confidence and, you know, get me to sort of learn um, all the, just, just very. There's a specific, in, you know, there's industry standards, right? For like, um, I mean, I, you know, we don't have to get into it too too deep, but like, you know, the minimum orders. You know, uh, how much are you, or how do you, mm -hmm. like, like for greeting cards, they usually order in batches of six. Okay. Like I didn't know that, and usually you have to wrap it Me up neither. in a little thing. 
so that they can keep track of what it is. Okay. You know, you have to, so, so there's all these things. And what I will say helped me is I'll, I'll do a little shout out. I know we shouted out Marisa earlier is uh, Katie Hunt. Okay. K-A-T-I-E, last name Hunt. Um, she has a podcast called uh, Proof to Product. Okay. Oh, it's all about, okay. It's all about wholesale and she and she also does her classes she has a membership but start with you know the 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 podcast is free super informative any sort of topic related to wholesale she is all about it um, okay, and what good. i did was what, what i took a class of hers and that really just helped me actually what it did was it made me realize that i didn't want to get into wholesale at the time because once i took her class i realized how much work it was going to take and yeah. i decided and i actually decided this is not the right stream of income for me right now, yeah. but it was super informative. I felt like after I took the class, I knew, I sort of, I knew the lingo. I knew what, I, what to expect, like, you know, what's going to happen after this happens? You know, how do you, right. what email do you send? What questions do you ask? All of that stuff, all those scenarios, she lays it out. Um, so it was super helpful. But what happened is after at one of my pop-ups oh. uh, here in New York, in New York, um, I happened to, um, be selling at a um, at a market where a a company had a stall, and they just sell gift you know our uh, sort of unique gift items for art from artists in New York. So we had a conversation. They were like, "Oh, you should sell your stuff at our store." I said, "Okay, okay great. That'll be to be a consignment you know sort of situation." And I happened to look on their website and then they had a post saying that they were looking for an artist to take with them to a trade show oh. at a gift show. Wow. Okay. Okay. And I didn't know, gift yeah, I, I didn't somewhere. know what that meant. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't know what that meant, but I, so I just DM them. I said, okay, sure. Are you guys still, you know, are you guys still looking for someone? And they said, yes. And then I found more information about what it was. So essentially they are a wholesale sales rep. Perfect. Okay. Okay. And so what they did was they took my products. So I actually didn't go, Jeanette, I wasn't there, but uh, they took my products to Vegas, to the you know major gift trade shows in Vegas, New York, and Atlanta. So, so did you sign a contract with them? Yes. Yeah. I did. Okay. You know, it was a certain, you know, there was a, 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 a fee I had to pay to, to be uh, for their services. Okay. I had to sign a contract. It's like a six month contract. Okay. And, you know, they, rep they essentially represented me at these sure. markets. If I were to do it myself, yeah. I would have had to spend easily five Thousand. times more, you know? Yeah. 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 Your yeah. flight, your hotel, the entry yeah. fee, you have to pay for your booth, you have to pay for help. Yeah. So all of that stuff. Um, so that was really a good learning experience. You know, we, we got some orders, um, not as much as I would have liked, but it was a re we, and we got lots of great feedback though. Yeah. Right. From, yeah. Mm -hmm. from buyers, mm -hmm. people who didn't buy, um, I could tell them now which ones were my best, my best sellers, right? So then now yeah, I can think right. about getting those done sort of in bulk and, you know, making some business decisions on the back end. See, that but was worth also, it. Yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. And, the, but the biggest thing for me is that I discovered that the people buying my, my the stores buying my products mm -hmm. were not the stores that I thought would be buying my products. What the heck? Interesting. What the okay. Heck? And the plot so, thickens. Yes. Yeah. So I so I was thinking I was oh sorry, my dog is, is barking. That, um I was okay. thinking I was gonna be in these um, hold on, hold on. I was thinking <laughs> I was gonna be in these we like dogs. We want to see. But I I was thinking I was gonna be in these like like millennial pink, like super like bright colored, like um just very sort of like neighborhood gift shop that was like all the, you know I don't know, just like where young people would go and buy stuff. Yeah. Unicorn, you know, all of that. Yeah. But all the people buying all the stores buying were like buying for older an older sort of more like it was just like a, it just looked like a more it was just not a, it was not just it just was not the market that i thought it was like a little yeah. bit like older yeah. a little bit like more um yeah 
It was just like, like an older pre- sensibility and style. Probably like, probably I'm guessing probably like people that have been working for a while that have um, disposable income, mm-hmm. that well, kind of thing. I no no more like just the style. It was more okay. like it, so okay. instead of like a millennial pink garden unicorn, it was more like antiques in a garden, antiques oh. in a rose garden. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, which, that, that's, yeah, that's... which is. <laughs> Not what I expected. Yeah, I can see but, your confusion. Yeah, yeah, but then I'm like, oh, okay. I haven't quite sort of absorbed what that means, but just all that to say that, like, I, I guess I've more like I've opened up yeah. the possibility. Like before, I wasn't even looking at those stores. Like if I walked sure. by one of those stores sure. in my neighborhood, I'd be like, oh, they're probably not interested. I'm going to go to this one. But now I'm like, oh, I need to I'm go see go. what they're doing. I'm going to yeah, go see I'm how go see. I can my how my products will work in there or what I could make. To make it so that what I'm um, making next could fit in with what they're doing. Yeah. So well, it's, it's almost yeah. like change. it's it's almost like your stuff then will stand out in that store versus a store yeah. that sells other stuff like what you have. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it just uh, it, it just was all very interesting i mean you know it's not you know i i hope it didn't sound bad or anything because it's not i'm just like it was really just intel that i did not have right yeah i was just operating blindly essentially and now this is like the market feedback the market's telling me this is where your stuff fits right so then now my that's the thing they say about branding all the time it's not what you think the brand is it's what you the customer thinks your brand is yeah Exactly. But it's hard to figure that out. <laughs> it really yeah, yeah, so is. Now, and you've yeah. got to put yourself out there in order to, you've got to initially, I think as artists, we just have to muster up the courage to put ourselves out there in whatever way that we can so that that feedback can start coming in. And then, then we can decide whether we want to, if, I guess if we want to sell, then we have to take that feedback and do I want to make the changes in order to sell or do I want to stick to my guns and I'm only going to do what I want to do, but I might not sell anything. And so there's kind of that balance. And I'm reading this book. Um, I've already read it, but I'm rereading it. uh, The artist freedom, uh, artist freedom formula. And literally last night he was saying like, I know you don't want to hear this, but you will, when you release this funnel to people, you're going to want to have two branches of your art. One is going to be where you, your creative branch, where you make whatever the heck you want to make and it may not ever sell. And then you have to find what your people want and what they want to purchase. And then you make art and that's what sells. And so that's initial, I kind of feel like that's what you're going through and what you're experiencing as well is like, finding what people want to buy from you and then making that, but then you still need to cre- keep your creative side as well to make crazy things that are just for you. Yeah. Yeah. No, de- definitely. I think there's, I, I'm, I'm realizing now that there is that, you know, where you just play, right. You're just making things and it, it might, it, it doesn't necessarily need to be something commercial, right? but um, the, 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 added, commercial. Yeah. Sort of, the added layer now for me is that I, I like that challenge of ah, yes. finding yeah. what it is that sells, but is also me. Yeah. Yes. And right? that's, that's a fun. Thought. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So like one of the back to this hand painted, this hand drawn thing, that's one of the things that I had talked about with, with, with my rep is he was like, what if you went back to something that's more, yeah. that looks more hand drawn, you know, like maybe yeah. that's going to be something they'll respond to. So I'm like, all right, let's, let's play with it and see. Right. Well, so it's fun for me because yeah. it's yeah. like a new thing for me to do. But then it's also like, if it works, great. Right. right. right? I, yeah. I kind of, yeah. I'm kind of in that boat where I feel like <clears throat> you do what you love and what you feel like creating versus what you think is going to sell. Because I think it may take longer, but those customers are going to find you. Yeah. And, and if you're yeah. patient, which I'm not very patient, <laughs> Neither they will am find I. you. I have to have the faith that they will find you. Yeah. And I think they can tell. They'll be able to tell if it's truly coming from you right. or, or not. Right. And there's so many choices now. There's so many different places for them to buy. There's so many things for them to buy. And I think our, if, if we want to be successful at this, 
artist selling art, right? Like we can make art all we want if we're not going to sell it. None of this matters. But if you right. want to sell, I think it has to. It should really come from yeah. from you, and yes. that'll that'll show through. Yeah, it should be yeah, a hundred percent. Well, and I think that we're also learning that there's there's two types of customers, right? So there's the customer who just wants to buy something because it's cute and they need it and they got to need a card, they need a notebook, whatever. But then there are are other people who truly want to buy art because it was made by the person and they are bought into the story and they want to support that person because they know, like, and trust them and they're bought into what they're all about and what they're yeah. making. So you're still, we're all still figuring that out and and Same that here. is going to be yeah you know you're you're living you are literally living it in the moment mm -hmm. we're we're considering it but you're living it yeah. you know and and thank you for sharing you know where what you've learned so far and where you're at with it because it's all something to take in interesting that you said that once you did that course, you were like, I don't really know if this is what I want to do as I'm listening to you I'm also thinking huh I don't really know if I want to take that on right now. Like I'm just overwhelmed with print. Yeah. So maybe that'll be something I put in my little brain for not my little brain, but in my brain for a little later, you know? So, well, then, but I, I thought I, I would be all in for it. Like it sounds so amazing, but there is a lot of work behind the scenes that go into making that happen. So Erwin, Speaking of that, that leads me into, so where, where are you now and where do you think you want to go? Like what, what you're working on your, your wholesale portfolio, but like, tell us, tell us what you're, what you're thinking you want to do. Oh gosh. Um, <laughs> Maybe that's too hard of a question. No, no, no. Um, I just don't like <laughs> Think about it because I'm in the same boat as Terry. I'm like, I want to do everything. Right. Um, but no, right. definitely right. Um, uh, working on the, the licensing portfolio, okay. right? Um, to, okay. to, to be able to pitch that. And for me, it's, um, I don't want to get too overwhelmed by it. So it's really taking existing artwork that I already have and just uh -huh. making a couple of tweaks and starting there. And I think yeah. once I get a process going and then you can just do it and scale it, then you keep going. But for now, Getting a couple of like us, you know, sell sheets going for my licensing work. Um, continue on the wholesale, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, I want to do some more murals. So I've oh done. Oh my gosh! Yeah. yeah, we didn't even talk about that. Tell and us that's about that. That's I wait 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 time out. I'm writing that down because obviously we have to have you on two more times at least because we have to talk about yeah. the oh, other I'm thing that I wrote down and then also for murals. But oh, I do have to much. say because I'm like I'm like the time monitor, right? Yeah, yeah. But um, we only have like two or three more minutes before Instagram's not going to let us record anymore. Okay. So, cause we're already at an hour, you guys, oh how quickly God. time flies when you're chatting with people that are amazing. <laughs> <Yeah>. So, <laughs> so how about if we plan, if you're down, Erwin, we would, I would love, I know, I know Jeanette would too, that we'd love to have you back on sometime here in the future and continue the conversation. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Let's let's do it. No pressure. Um, yeah, I, 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 I could I could talk about this all day. I could talk about this all oh, day. So. Don't, okay. so it's such interesting stuff. So could we? That's is. why we started this because we wanted to share with other artists so we can get as much information out there to share with each other as we could. So tell us then, um, how can people find you? What you have coming up? What you want to talk about before you we sign off? Sure. Uh, so you can find me uh, on Instagram at Duckamuck, um, and that'll be tagged on this video. Um, and my website is aduckamuck.com. So there's an extra okay. A in the front, aduckamuck.com. Okay. Um, and uh, so yeah, so I, I do sort of uh, greeting cards, prints. Um, and I have the one thing I will plug as what I'm doing coming up is I have these acrylic necklaces oh. that I made of my... Oh. And we're oh, doing a pre-order right now through May 12th. Okay. You can look for them on my website. Um, if you're in the States or Canada, there's one link for that. If you're in Europe, we're also doing 
a different listing so that folks there can um, take advantage without you know worrying about crazy shipping prices. And this is another. Oh my it's a god! Fire breathing I fish. Coral, it's so, so and it just cute. sits high on the neck. Yeah. Oh, it's perfect for yes. Mother's Day. Mother's Day's coming up. Yeah. 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 So, so these are all um, uh, done by a uh, female-owned business in the UK. That uh, I, I found them on Etsy. They're great. Uh, yeah, and we're doing a little pre-order um, situation with these two. So eventually, we can talk about this later on too. I want to do. So these are just necklaces now, but I feel like I need some charms. I need some earrings. Yes. I yes. need some other stuff to just round out a whole collection because just two necklaces just doesn't seem. Um, it seems a little just like haphazard. Oh but I feel gosh. like there's there's more there's more potential yes. there. Oh my You're gosh, that's so that's exciting. exciting. Yes, that's yeah. super exciting. Yay. Yeah. Okay, well, that is awesome. I can't wait. Go to his website, everybody. Check out his yeah. work. It's just so fun and happy. And um, and then I want to hear about your murals next time, too. Because that yes. could be yeah. so, yeah. another, like, for corporate offices and headquarters and all that kind of stuff. So I would love to hear more about that too, because that's something Terry and I can do as well. With yeah. Our... Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Definitely. Yeah. So I'm happy to come back anytime, but you know, to the folks still sitting or who are gonna watch this later, um, you know, DM me if you have any questions. I'm happy to, you know, help how I can. I think we're all very as you can tell from watching this, we're all very supportive. And we all just wanted each other to to create art and to you know thrive and succeed and yes. do this you know and have fun. So uh, yeah, thank you both for um, for having this platform. Thanks. It's it's amazing. Thank you. Thanks. And I had okay. so much fun. Yeah. Yay! Thank, thank you. We yeah. did too. You're an amazing yeah. human. I can't wait to get to know you better. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Bye, right. everybody. Okay. Thanks for watching Thanks. live with us. Okay. Bye. Have a good rest of your Wednesday. Bye. Bye. You too. Bye.